These five spins are really the fundamental essences, you could say building blocks of creation, revealed by modern physics. And quite interestingly, first just to conclude, that the physical universe comprised of elementary particles, those building blocks we call the particles of nature, are just the different reverberant frequencies of the unified field. The whole thing is really just an expression of vibration. Now, these five spin types in the language of modern physics have a corresponding name in the ancient Vedic science of health, Ayurveda. And these five spin types of modern physics correspond to what are called the pancha mahabhutas, familiar, of course, to many of us here. If you look at these, the structure of the universe and the fundamental elements of the universe described by modern physics in terms of these different spin types from gravity all the way to the Higgs boson, these five have their direct correlations, direct correspondence in the language of the Veda, as again these Pancha Mahabhutas, Akasha, Vayu, Agni, Jal, and Prithivi. And it's not just a numerical correlation, but it's an exact functional equivalence, different names for the same thing. Akasha means space. Not space is nothing, but space is subtle substance. And similarly, the graviton field is the field of gravity the field of curved space-time geometry. Um, space as subtle substance, space as relativistic fluid, the finest of all substances in the universe. Agni or Tejas means fire, heat, digestion. And the corresponding spin type in string theory is electromagnetism, which is fire, light, heat, chemical structure and chemical transformation, and so on. So we have really, in, in this deep structure of creation, a, an identity of structure described from the standpoint of modern science and the ancient Vedic wisdom and its expression in Ayurvedic medicine. Language learning is recognized. The ability to come up with a symbol is recognized for the ability to think abstractly. To get beyond that, we need to transcend language. And that's where transcendental meditation comes in. What it does, it takes you beyond thinking, feeling, categories, to just the field of silence and being, that field which is underlying all of life. And this is the next driver of experience which is needed for growth. Just experience transcending. Here the brain is looking to your right. Center of the brain is a thalamus. That's on top of the brainstem. It's the switchboard of information coming up to the brain. And scientists have found two different types of nuclei in the thalamus. One is called core nuclei. They're just groups of nuclei where content comes in. Vision, hearing, touch, taste. It creates this loop with the surface of the brain and that's the neural representation of what's outside. But to see things, there's another group of nuclei called matrix nuclei. They're spread throughout the thalamus. Input to these are the ascending circuits of the central nervous system. And these nuclei also create these loops with the cortex, but the core of these loops is not content, it's wakefulness, it's alertness, it's subjectivity. And what transcending does is we learn how to decrease content while wakefulness is maintained. This chart we created sometime in 2010, and what you see on this chart is there are 230 knowledge points from Ayurveda. And they start from abstract, so-called abstract, concepts from Ayurveda, uh, which uh, have been discussed earlier, starting from Loka Purusha to Ashtanga Ayurveda. All these knowledge points, Pancha Mahabhuta to Tridosha to Agni, everything has been connected to each other in a forward and backward linkages. There are color codes, there are directions, which connects all the logic of Ayurveda uh, together, starting from Loka Purusha to Ashtanga Ayurveda. I feel that this is fundamental of Ayurveda, the Loka Purusha concept, Yatha Pinde, Tatha Brahmande was, was talked about. We are made up of uh, trillions of cells, but we forget that uh, hardly 10% of our cells are really our cells in our own body. So we ask a question that who are we? When the modern medicine is treating a human being, what are we treating at? Because 90% of the cells in our body are not our body cells, they're microbial cells. So this microbiome understanding which is coming up very rapidly today. But unfortunately, rather than going on a scientific robust track and learning from the ancient wisdom,
today we see that we are going in another track by thinking or imagining that stool transplant like weird concepts can uh, or way you know